There is no breakthrough unless there is something to break through from. Everybody be like, I want a breakthrough. What, what, what you need a breakthrough from? What you need a breakthrough from? There will never ever be a breakthrough in your life unless there is something that you need to break through. Some obstacle to overcome or some opposition to triumph over. But when the opposition comes, we cannot surrender to defeat or give up our dream. If we know that we are operating in God's plan and purpose for our life, if we are embracing our divine destiny, then we need to keep on keeping on. That's it. That's it. Come hell or high water, you have to keep on keeping on. If everybody is with you or not, you got to keep on keeping on. Even if you have, even if nobody is on the phone to encourage you, you have to encourage yourself and remind yourself of what the Lord told you already. Plain and simple. We have to want it enough to pursue it and persevere through it. You got to want what you want enough. See this thing that I'm doing. I done stepped into. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna step into the arena of being of being a recording artist. God, I'm going I'm gonna step out in faith. I heard the call. I'm gonna do it. I have to pursue that. I got to pursue that thing. Whether people want to applaud me or not, whether what the naysayers might say, whatever people might say, I got to still keep going. Even when my even when I might feel discouraged all the time, even I got to still keep going. And know that my gift is my gift. Your gift is your gift. That's right. And not be intimidated when I'm in a room full of other singers. Because what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. One of the areas that the enemy also messes with. We said time. 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 That's one area. Another thing that he always tries to hit us with is fear. And he, it was a prophetic word. He said your season is here. You don't have to fear. You need to press on. Fear. Doubt. And unbelief. See, one of the things that the enemy attacks is our belief system. Faith. Faith to believe and to trust in God. Jesus said, listen, he went into a town. He said, I could not do many works here because of the faith level. He said, because of the faith level, it restricted me from really moving in what I want to do for all the people. I could only do but a few miracles here and there. And even when Jesus, when a man confronted Jesus, he said, oh Lord, please heal my unbelief. Please, I want to believe. Please, 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 please heal that thing. Because that belief was under attack. The enemy will throw arrows of fear at you all the time. To cause you to doubt God. Huh? To doubt God. To not believe in God's word. To not trust in him. And the Bible says, listen, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to your own understanding, your own intellect, your own know-how, your own degrees, your own way of doing it. You have to lean on to God. You have to lean on to God. But the enemy, many times, it don't matter on what level you at. It don't matter whether you are in elementary school in the kingdom or in college or get, taking your master degree. God, it does not matter. There is, there is fear on every level. To cause us. That is what's under attack. The Bible declares that faith without works is dead. Many a times, like what was told to me, listen, listen, you could do the work, but it's your faith that I want to come after. I know that you could work. I know that you could do all these wonderful things, but your faith is what I'm coming after. Then understand this. Understand this. Jesus heard a conversation. Jesus had to even tell, tell Peter some intel, high classified things. He said, listen, I heard a conversation about the enemy, what the devil had about you. Peter. The enemy, his desire is to sift you as wheat. Yeah. But I'm praying for you that your faith fail you not. Yeah. Because it's your faith that he's after Peter. He wants you to walk away from your promise. Because Peter, I said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Peter, even though, even though you're going to deny me, there is something that I want to do in you. But if you walk out of faith, if you start doubting me. So that is what the enemy is after. That is what the, that was, that's what, that, that, apostle, that's what the enemy was after with me. Me too. I remember, I remember.
remember sitting in my car, sitting in my car, Wednesday, Wednesday, and before I even got into the church office, and I'm sitting there because, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to call these different radio stations and magazines for the song, and it's, you know, I was calling to inquire certain procedures, and it's, you know, everybody want money. Yeah. And I can't even knock the hustle because yeah. everybody need to get paid. Come on, man. You, say, you saw that? You saw how I did that and I came back up? Yeah. All right. So everybody want to get paid yeah. before they even listen to your song, before they even consider it. And I'm in the car and I'm like, Lord Jesus, I can't knock the hustle, but you know what, God, I don't have it. You know how my checking and savings account is working right now. <laughs> so I know that you have it. I don't have this and that, but I have you. Yeah. Jesus, you said, my father, my, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. So I'm going to quote back the word to you. God, I need you. You said that the favor of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. You declared in your word that you will not withhold one good thing to them that walk uprightly. And listen, I need favor. Favor is better than any master card. Do not leave home without it. So God, so God, I'm a pull from heaven. I need some favor. You said that you're the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for you? And I need this song to move. I need this song to move because all I have is what's in my hands. It is the faith. And, I, and it, it's, no, I had to remind myself of the word of God because I felt like my, my infrastructure of faith. Because everybody got an infrastructure. Everybody got a construct. My infrastructure of faith was trying to weaken. The enemy was trying to weaken the foundation of that faith. And I had to encourage myself and I had to remind myself in the, in the Lord. I had to remind myself of the promises of the Lord, which are yes and amen. amen. So God, you told me to do it. You told me you would not tell me to go someplace if you were not going to be there already. To welcome me. So I need you. And God started to do it. Before that day was over, I got the, I got the nicest co uh, uh, conversation with back, back via email that I would ever want in my whole life. Can't tell you now, but when it, ha when it finishes and the deal comes through, you better believe I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it. Shando, I'm going to tell it. Right now, I'm sitting on that thing. And I'm bathing it with prayer. Breakthrough comes to those who are willing to embrace and pursue their divine purpose. Yeah. You have to keep on keeping on despite. Listen, I've had some people say some stuff to me. Okay? I've had some stuff said to me. And the thing is this. I've had some stuff said to me by people that are close. Yes. Wow. Who else? And they don't mean no harm. But the eyes of their understanding have not been opened. And they can't see what you see. So don't get mad at them. Forgive them and release. Because they don't see. But see, the enemy is not going to... See, when he tries to attack your faith and stop you from, from really, really experiencing the breakthrough of God, he, it's going to come from the people that are the closest to you. I can prove it to you scripturally. All right? I can prove it. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jesus' inner court, his inner court, his inner, his inner friends, the inner disciples, the disciples that were able to see him transfigured, the disciples that were able to be with him. I'm talking about even Peter said, Yes. Peter said, God forbid you go to the cross. When he revealed to Peter, listen, I got to go. There is a plan. There is an assignment on my life. I came to die for all of humanity. Oh, Lord forbid that happen. He said, oh, get thee behind me, Satan. And that was one of the disciples. How much more your brother or your sister that's close to you? So why do we get so vexed in our spirit? It comes with the territory. So don't I think it's strange when you're literally your brother, your sister, your mother, your husband, your wife, whomever will say some foolishness to you to keep you from getting to your destination. They don't mean no harm. I could prove it to you again scripturally again. Elijah, when he had his servant, his servant said, listen, his servant said, oh, listen, prophet, I don't know if you got the memo, but we surrounded by a whole bunch of hosts of, a host of uh, uh, enemies right now. 
I don't know if you got the memo. You need to open up your eyes. The prophet said, no, 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 no. You need to open up your eyes. Let me pray for you for a moment. Let me have a conversation with God. God, open up Jesus' eyes so that he can really see that there are more with us than are against us. Next thing you know, his servant opened up his eyes. He said, oh, snap. Look at all of the angels recant round about us. Oh, my goodness. Don't get mad at people when they don't see what you see. The eyes of their understanding has not been opened. God gave you the vision, not them. They don't see what you see. They don't know what you know. They don't know what God has told you in the midnight hour. They don't know. You better be obedient. Don't get mad. And yes, the enemy will use folk around you. It's all right, though. It's all right. That's how you know. That is an indicator that you are on the right path. Follow the yellow brick road. Huh? That's what the munchkin said to Dorothy. You better follow the yellow brick road because you off to see. I'm not talking about the wizard, but I'm talking about the king of kings and the lord of lords. You off to your destiny. So you better follow. You better click them heels and follow the yellow brick road. Follow it. Touch your neighbor and say breakthroughs are not an accident. You, all right. All right. All right. You don't just stumble into a breakthrough. Understand this, everybody. If I, if I could say anything tonight, we don't just stumble into breakthroughs. Ooh, oh, I had a breakthrough, y'all. No, no, no. <laughs> it just happened. I don't know. You know, it just, whoop. But there is, <laughs> no, we don't just stumble into breakthroughs. Real breakthroughs come as a result of consistent effort that is based upon, now watch this, strategic plan of action that comes from asking God and His will. Yes. Say so. Yes. Breakthroughs are strategic. Breakthroughs are not accidents. All victories are, watch this now. All victories are planned out by God. Huh? All victories. Your victories has already been planned out by God. And now for you to get to that victory, you have to be obedient. For you to get to that victory, it, it, it takes you strategizing with God, seeking him. But you better believe your victory has already been planned. He's strategic. He tells you what to do, when to do it. If we would only obey and follow God, understand our victories will come quicker. The Bible declares, I can prove that thing in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope uh, and a future. That's what it says. And an expected end. Then you will call. Now verse 12 of that, uh, that same scripture says. Then you will call upon me. And come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with all your heart. Your victory has already been planned out. Your breakthroughs have already been planned out. God has a plan for you, but we will only be able to move in his will when we pray and seek him with our whole heart. We are at the precipice of our breakthroughs. We are at the edge of that thing. So you cannot say, I'm going to give a half-hearted effort. No, this is time for all of your strength. This is when you really got to go for the goal. Just like running a race. The running the race is good, but it's at the last stretch. That's when you feel like all the cramps are happening. That's when you feel like, oh, I'm thirsty. I've been running for so long. I'm tired, Jesus. <laughs> this is not the time to second guess or to waver between two opinions. Because the Bible declares now faith yes. is a substance of things hoped for. Yeah. And the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. The key word is now. Now faith is the substance is a substance, it's tangible, it's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When is God going to do it? I asked God a question. I said, God, when are you going to do this thing for me? I don't know about you, but I had to make it personal for me. He said, I looked at the watch. He said, look at your watch. I said, when? He said, now. I said, what time? He said, now. He said, now faith. Let it be according to your faith. Understand this, understand this. In the book of John, he said, he said, he said, he said, and Jesus said, listen, understand, you will see the glory of God if you would just believe. We would see it. We will see it if we just believe. If we just believe. 
Here's a little secret about breakthroughs. They are not a result of passively waiting for God to do something for you. Breakthroughs come when you allow God to do something through you. You're not passively waiting for God to do something for you. You're saying, God, you're going to do something through me. David received the breakthrough, not because just God just did it for him, but God did it through him. He said, God, you did it by my hand. By my hand, God performed the breakthrough. How is God going to perform the breakthrough? He's going to do it through you. Let's look at David. Look, go back in verse 11 of 1 Chronicles. First, verse 11 of 1 Chronicles 14. David said, he said, God has broken through my enemies. God has broken through my enemies by my hand like, watch this, a breakthrough of water. Do you see that, everybody? Amen. God used David's hands and David's actions and David's decisive action to provide a breakthrough for David and for all of Israel. David named the place Baal Perizim. I know this sounds odd because we are used to names like Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. Understand everybody that Baal, B-A-A-L, is the name of a false god. Going someplace. Matter of fact, the false god of, a, of the Philistines. So why do you think David named the place Baal Perizim? Some might say the word Baal is just a Philistine word for God. And David used their word to remind them that God, the God of Israel, granted his people a victory over their enemies. Others say, Apostle, that the translation indicates that God had given Israel a victory over the gods of the Philistines with the literal meaning being this is a breakthrough over Baal. Come on now. This is. This is a breakthrough over the spirit of poverty that has been holding your family back. This is a breakthrough over the spirit of cancer that has been trying to overtake your body. This is what I'm going to remind cancer. I'm going to remind poverty. I'm going to remind divorce and separation. I'm going to remind them that your God has broken through by your hands. Hey, that God has broken through every obstacle. Huh? Every roadblock yeah. that God says, who am I going to use? Who am I going to use? I, I, I need to use somebody. I'm finna use you. Yeah. I'm going to use you. Yeah. I'm going to use you for my glory. Yeah. I'm going to use you for my glory. Yeah. There is a sound of a breakthrough yeah. that is hitting the body of Christ. That doors are going to fly open. That Understand, understand, Apostle. God is not just breaking us through and opening us, opening up doors for us to walk through from. But God is also opening up doors for us in this hour to walk out from. There's some things in this time that God wants us to walk out from that we've been locked up, tangled up, tied up inside, and God is unlocking those locks and giving us access to walk out. And how is God doing that? Is He going to send a man or a woman of God? Yes, he can use that, but God says, I want to use you. It requires you, it requires your obedience. It requires you to have a, a strong relationship with me. It requires you to stay focused and have your mind stayed on me. It requires you to not lean on to your own understanding. It requires you to walk by faith and not by sight. It requires you. Because I'm about to break through. Like the breaking of many waters. How is God going to do it? When is God going to do it? When he going to do it? He going to do it now. How he going to do it? He going to do it through you. He going to do it through you. So this shall be called Baal Perizim. This shall be called 
This is a breakthrough over Baal. Come on, baby. This year. This is a breakthrough. Over, I don't know about you, but I'm saying it to myself. This is a breakthrough. Emmanuela, over every obstacle that has been holding you back. Y'all, please follow me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. E. Young TV, y'all. Let me know how you're liking the show, y'all. Let me know how you're liking the show. And please, y'all, I told you, I told you, your girl, your girl, your girl, okay, is a recording artist now. I'm so excited. God is so very good, y'all. He's awesome. He is an awesome, awesome God. Like I said, follow me. Follow me as I continue to follow Christ, y'all. Continue to pray for me on social media. And visit my website, www.emmanuelayoung.com. Give me some feedback, y'all. Give me some feedback. And if you'd like to advertise on the show, go to my website. Let me know. Let me know. I'll shout your, shout your event out, y'all. I'll shout it out. But until next time, everybody, don't forget. Forget, whatever you do, but don't forget this, that you are chosen. You've been called out to stand out. There's a sound of rain.